So it was a year where we didn't necessarily have a ton of storms. So the quantity was fairly low, but the quality or the strength of the storms was quite high. And so the way that NOAA verifies hurricane seasons is based on accumulated cyclone energy, which is a geeky metric that accounts for storm intensity and duration. And so basically when you have strong storms, like you mentioned with Umberto, Aaron, and certainly Melissa, they generate a lot of ACE. So we met the threshold of an above normal season, just played out in kind of an unusual way with, you know, not necessarily a ton of hurricanes, but the hurricanes that formed uh, were quite strong. Yeah, we got there. It was a roundabout head scratcher of a season, but overall, by that metric, it was right on track. That was Dr. Phil Klotzbeck from Colorado State University breaking down this unusual 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. CSU just released their forecast verification, looking back at what they predicted before the season. And that comes just a day after we learned Category 5 Hurricane Melissa packed a record-breaking 252-mile-per-hour wind gust, at least a measured wind gust, by one of the drop zones released by the hurricane hunters that was before it made that, that terrible, uh, terrible uh, landfall on Jamaica. Uh, let's bring in Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross. Brian, as you look back at the season and listen in on some of uh, Phil's comments, how do you describe what we just experienced? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with Phil. It was an unusual season in that the number of named storms was below normal, but the amount of total tropical energy was above normal, and usually those two uh, jive. As a matter of fact, the CSU forecast is based on forecasting how much total energy there's going to be, how much total ACE there's going to be in the Atlantic. And then they say, OK, there's going to be about 20 percent extra ACE. So we'll go 20 percent above average on our numbers. That's how they make their forecast. But uh, this season, there, there was a, a disconnect between the named storm total and the amount of energy because of those extreme, extremely strong storms. So here it was the total 13, the average 14. There you see the forecast. Now, see CSU puts out a number, 16, where NOAA puts out a range. But notice their forecasts are about the same. It, it actually, CSU technically puts out a range as well, a confidence range. So uh, the, the, the forecast number of named storms is a little bit high, but overall the forecasts were really quite good this year. All right, so there you see the number of hurricanes, and this is what Phil was talking about. The number of total hurricanes was only five, where the average is seven. And then when we look at the category three and above, now we're above normal. So everything was skewed to these uh, stronger storms. Notice all these forecasts are really uh, pretty close if you consider there's a range around the CSU number. Obviously, the NOAA numbers encompass encompass the five and and uh, everything was pretty close here and then when we look at this ace now exactly what that number means is not really important but the average ace in the year is 123 this year ended up at 133 the csu forecast was 140 so very very close now the NOAA forecast uh, is based on a different time period and i've tried to kind of equalize it with csu that's why there's an asterisk there and uh, my estimate is they would have forecast about 154. So a little bit high, but the, but everything was more or less as forecast. Really, the forecasts were really uh, quite good and all skewed toward this toward these very strong storms that generated all that energy that uh, Phil was talking about. All right, so here's the season, 13-5, and there was the big thing, the four category three and above, and three of those were category five, which was just uh, super unusual. So here's the only U.S. landfall. Thankfully, we got through this season with only a 50-mile-an-hour tropical storm. And look, this whole storm, Chantal, only lasted two days, July 5th and 6th came ashore near a Myrtle Beach there on the 6th of July. And then Bermuda had five storms in the vicinity, one of the tropical storm, Dexter, two of them Category 5s. Boy, just lucky Bermuda didn't get worse than it did. Uh, uh, Melissa just missed to the right. In other words, they got the weaker side of the storm. Still uh, quite a windy day, but it did uh, pass by with minimal effects there in Bermuda. And all these other storms, including uh, Category 5 Umberto there, had some effect on the island. Then we get down to Jamaica, 
2.10 a.m. local time on the 29th of October. I mean, how could we forget that? 185 miles per hour. I have the asterisk there because the, the Hurricane Center is evaluating all the data, and they're going to come out with a final report in the spring, and we're going to get their opinion on taking all the data into account, not just what was available while it was happening, but take it all into account. What's the estimate of the landfall uh, wind speed? Now, we, we talked about this 252 mile per hour measurement of a gust uh, in the eye wall from a drop sonde, one of those instrument packages they drop out of the aircraft. Yes, that's a record, but what the record is, it's a record measurement. The If you take that number that's aloft, and then you say, okay, if it's that much aloft, how much is it down near the surface? And these are gusts, so if you uh, dial that back to what would they would be with sustained wind, you don't come up with a crazy number for a 185-mile-an-hour hurricane. But it's just we don't normally measure those things, get that instrument cluster right in those strongest winds. So that's what the record is. The record is the fact that we measured it. We can't talk about this season without uh, also talking about all these Category 5 storms, of course. And there's the unusual thing, the above normal ACE, which is usually the metric that we look at to talk about how busy is the season, but the below normal uh, number of named storms. So that combination is really kind of weird. All right, the one other thing from this hurricane season, of course, was the incredible performance of these AI models that we saw for the first time. And so there you see them, the, the Google model and the National Hurricane Center model were the best in terms of track, or not National Hurricane Center model, the National Hurricane Center forecast. And here we are looking at the intensity, and look at the yellow one is the NHC and the red one is Google. So they were down here at the, at the bottom better than uh, the other models this year, first time out of the gate to get these AI models, Hurricane Center, you looking at it and evaluating it along with the traditional models. Now, we're, what we're going to see next year is whether they incorporate the AI models in some fashion into this averaging scheme they have. So the way that the Hurricane Center normally forecasts is they look at the set of models that are most credible, and then they have a smart way of averaging them and coming up with a consensus. And that's the most reliable kind of forecasting we've had until the Google DeepMind model came out this hurricane season. So how are they going to incorporate the Google DeepMind model and the traditional models? And, and if they do a fancy kind of average on that, does it make a better forecast? Or are we kind of right where we are and the Google model is just plain old the best, no matter how we look at it? We have other AI models coming out now, right now, this year. So we're going to see how all this is evaluated when it all uh, comes together here in the spring, Ian. But it's a, an interesting time in the hurricane world as things are changing a lot uh, after a quite unusual season. Yeah, Ian? no question. And as you said, small sample, but that was a slam dunk for the AI models, no question. That's for short-term mm -hmm. weather prediction. Uh, Brian, is there any is there going to be any involvement on a seasonal scale as we look ahead to maybe some of the forecasts for next season? Has AI gotten in the mix for for that time scale? I'm not aware of anybody that's doing seasonal forecasts. Uh, although the AI models do go out, you know, more than two weeks now, and some people have run some uh, AI models out to in the 30 to 40 day range with some success by doing some tricky things on the front end. So uh, I won't be surprised to see this stretch out into the three, four week uh, time period and getting some kind of, of data that we can use to to uh, improve long longer range forecasts. Seasonal forecast, though, I have not heard of any uh, success, recent success anyway, in making those any better at this point. Interesting. Coming attractions in the, uh, the new world of tropical forecasting. Brian, as always, uh, great work through the season, and uh, thanks for joining us with it with a look back. It was a kind of a, a bizarre 2025. That's Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross. Thank you.